As we read the poem, we're going to mark things that stand out to us, key details that help us understand the poem. So I'd like you to annotate along with me with your pen or pencil. Take a second to do that now. All right, The Kids Who Die by Langston Hughes. I see that it was written in 1938. All right, so that is almost a um, 100 years ago at this point, 80 years ago. This is for the kids who die, black and white, for kids will die certainly. The old and rich will live on a while as always, eating blood and gold, letting kids die. So I know that they aren't literally eating the blood of kids. Sorry, I've got to think here to myself, what do they really mean? I think blood is going to represent the life force of the kids and gold is going to represent money. All right, so maybe the old and rich are going to get their money, right, by making the kids work, right? So the old and rich are living on, living off of, getting their money from the kids who die. Kids will die in the swamps of Mississippi organizing sharecroppers. Kids will die in the streets of Chicago organizing workers. Kids will die in the orange groves of California telling others to get together. Whites and Filipinos, Negroes and Mexicans, all kind of kids will die who don't believe in lies and bribes and contentment and a lousy peace. These kids who are dying here, so I see this repeated, kids will die, kids will die, kids will die, right? These kids are speaking out against the people in power, the people who are forcing them to work in terrible conditions, maybe as sharecroppers, or maybe they're working in factories or working in farms, right? These people, um, the kids, are speaking out against them, trying to get their entire group to speak up for better working conditions, better living conditions, more money. These kids don't believe in lies, don't believe in bribes, and don't want to be contented, right? They don't want to just be satisfied with the way things are, right? So essentially, the kids who die... are the ones who speak up against the power. Of course, the wise and the learned who pen editorials in the papers and the gentlemen with doctor in front of their names, white and black, who make surveys and write books, will live on weaving words to smother the kids who die. And sleazy courts and the bribe-reaching police and the blood-loving generals and the money-loving preachers will all raise their ha hands against the kids who die. I'm going to come back down here for a little bit and look at this. So we've got the gentlemen with doctor in front of their name, right? People who sit around and write, make surveys and write books, right? They make editorials and papers. So these are maybe newspaper editors, um, people in colleges, right? They might be very smart. They might be learned, right? They're smart. But they aren't doing anything to help the kids. In fact, Langston Hughes is saying that they smother them, right? They smother them with their words, right? So maybe these people aren't helping at all. Instead, they're actually hurting. And then he goes on to give us these descriptions of courts and police and general. Those are all people in power. Okay? Look at how he describes them. He describes them as sleazy, which is untrustworthy. Bribe reaching, which means that they accept bribes, so they're untrustworthy. Blood loving, right, that they're vicious. So these are terrible descriptions of the people in power. So the people in power are really corrupt. And that's how he's showing us there. Let's go back up here. We've got more. The money loving preachers will all raise their hands against the kids who die beating them with laws and clubs and bayonets and bullets to frighten the people. For the kids who die are like iron in the blood of the people. And the old and rich don't want the people to taste the iron of the kids who die, don't want the people to get wise to their own power, to believe in Angelo Herndon or even get together. Okay, so up here I see that the people in power, right? So the power, powerful, let's call them the powerful, are beating these kids who speak up against them with their laws, but also with clubs and bullets, all right? So the powerful are hurting those beneath them. All right, and the reason why they're doing that, 
right? They're doing that because the old and the rich don't want the people to get wise to their own power. The old and the rich, hold on one second. The old and the rich don't want the people to get wise to their own power. So the old and the rich are trying to scare people. They're trying to frighten the people by murdering the kids who speak out against them. Right? And by doing that, they are attempting to keep people down. All right, let's finish up the poem. Listen, kids who die, maybe now there will be no monument for you except in our hearts. Maybe your bodies will be lost in a swamp or a prison grave or the potter's field or the rivers where you're drowned like Liebnick. But the day will come, you are sure yourselves that it is coming, when the marching feet of the masses will raise for you a living monument of love and joy and laughter and black hands and white hands clasped as one and a song that reaches the sky, the song of the life triumphant through the kids who die. So right now there's no monument, there's no statue being built. Their bodies are literally being just left, right? Their dead bodies are being left behind and forgotten. Right, so they are completely forgotten. Right? But he's saying the day will come, someday in the future, right, that the marching feet of the masses, the people are going to recognize their own power. Right? They're going to come together and rise up against the powerful. Right? The song of the life triumphant. They're going to be able to sing that one day their death actually meant something. So one day there's hope. All right.